everyone, it's Dr. Cambo. We're back with another CPT coding surgery review session. And today we're going to take a look at the first part of the 30,000 series. The 30,000 series, guys, is huge. So I'm going to be separating it into a couple of parts. So Today, we're going to look at page 185, where the respiratory system begins, code 30000 through 32999. Of course, on page 185, you'll want to note that the body parts for this system are in red, and then the types of procedures are listed in blue. Take an opportunity, guys, to explore the different body parts and procedures that are included in the respiratory system. So first up, we're going to go on over to page 187. And on page 187, under nose, we have our incision procedures. Now, what I want to point out here, notice you have two codes under incision. They kind of look alike. Notice they start off with drainage, abscess, or hematoma, naso. The first one says naso internal approach. The second one is naso septum. Words matter, guys. Pay attention to the different details. Next up for our excision procedures on the nose. Here we're starting again on page 187, codes 30100. And these go all the way over to 30160. Now, you want to pay close attention here. So we start off with uh, biopsy, but then we have excision codes. Notice the first two options are excision of a nasal polyp. The first option is simple. The second option is extensive. But notice in parentheses behind the word polyp, it says the letter S that lets you know that this procedure can be captured for more than one polyp, but you only are going to capture the code once. Also notice the parenthetical note that talks about if this is a bilateral procedure, you want to use a modifier 50. After that, you guys, you have some additional excision codes, such as um, excision or destruction of a lesion. And notice that they are divided into intranasal lesion, internal approach versus external approach. Also in this area, you have excision of a dermoid cyst. We have excision of the inferior turbinate partial or complete any method we also have the submucous resection of the inferior turbinate very important to note which procedure was done as 30130 and 30140 look very similar then we have rhinectomy 31050 and 31056 and notice that those are divided based upon if it is partial or total Next up, we have our repair procedures. And here, I want you to notice rhinoplasty. So our rhinoplasty procedures have some very unique characteristics to note. So I want you to first notice 310400 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 is for rhinoplasty primary. So 30400. 0, 0, 0, rhinoplasty primary but then jump down to 30430 and notice that that's rhinoplasty but it is secondary so first I want you to know that the secondary procedure is a situation where the patient has already had the rhinoplasty and we're having to do it again now back to the primary codes I want you to notice that they are divided based upon the extent of the rhinoplasty procedure and um, the secondary procedure is done with the same level of specificity. Then take a look at 30460. This is a rhinoplasty for nasal deformity secondary to a congenital cleft lip and or palate. Guys, pay close attention. 
On the next page, page 188, we have our septo. Notice the change in the words. These are all repair procedures, but notice that they are going to vary based upon which part was actually repaired. So was it the nose or was it the nasal septum? All right, next up, we have our sinusotomy procedures, and this takes us to the bottom of page 188 um, on our accessory sinuses. Of note, it is critical for you to know what sinus is actually being operated on. The other thing that's important to note as you look at the different options, for example, 31020, sinusotomy, maxillary, intranasal. Notice there is a note that identifies that we should use modifier 50 if this procedure is done on both sides. That's because these codes are unilateral codes unless otherwise stated and so if you are going to do a bilateral procedure you want to use a modifier 50 to show that the procedure is bilateral in nature other than that guys these codes are divided based upon the specificity of the procedure which is documented in the medical record Next up, we have our endoscopy procedures, specifically sinus endoscopy procedures. One of the things that you'll know about endoscopy procedures in general is that uh, for the most part, if there is a diagnostic endoscopy procedure followed by a surgical, the diagnostic is included in the surgical procedure. All right, so here we're talking about codes 31231 all the way over to 31298. Guys, lots of parenthetical notes. I mean, there are a lot of them. You could have five or six parenthetical notes underneath one code. So you'll want to make sure that you are reading those parenthetical notes to ensure proper code assignment. Lots of notes that tell you do not report this with that. All right, next up, we have our laryngoscopy procedures. These start on page 192. Documentation is always important, um, but with these particular codes, you have to read the operative note to determine if it was an operating microscope that was used or if it was a telescope that was used. I already mentioned that the diagnostic was included in the surgical, so you want to watch out for that. You also want to watch out for terms such as indirect and direct. So if you look at code 31505, notice the code description says laryngoscopy indirect. But if you look at 31515, that's laryngoscopy direct. Let's take it a step further. 31530, laryngoscopy direct operative. So very, very important to ensure that you know what your provider is doing for proper code assignment. The other thing I wanted to point out is um, if you look at code 31575, there's another laryngoscopy and notice that that particular code says flexible, so it's a flexible scope. If you turn over to page um, 194, code 31579 says rigid or flexible. So again guys words matter next up we're going to go to page 195 and look at procedures on the trachea and bronchi and here we're going to look at our tracheostomy procedures so our tracheostomy procedures are divided based upon if this is a planned procedure or an emergency one these codes are also divided based upon the approach. Was it transtracheal or was it via the cricothyroid membrane? As it relates to a planned procedure, you'll also note that the codes are also divided based upon patient age. Okay, next up, we're going to look at some bronchoscopy procedures, which begin on page 195. You'll want to uh, course note that the diagnostic is included in the surgical bronchoscopy also you want to pay very very close attention to what was actually done today 
A lot of these codes have parenthetical notes. If you're looking on page 196, lots of parenthetical notes that tells you to use this code in conjunction with that code or do not code this code. Or there may be a note that tells you, hey, use this code once a day, no matter how many uh, biopsies are performed. Next up, we're going to go down to lungs and pleura on page 198. And um, on page 198, you are immediately going to notice, yes, you guessed it, subsection notes. If you don't learn, guys, anything from listening to this video series, it is critical that you note that guidelines are very, very, and very important to the coding process. All right, so on page 199 we start off with code 32035 which is our thoracostomy procedures then we have our thoracotomy procedures uh, guys just like other codes in the respiratory section these codes are unilateral unless otherwise noted there are of course uh, parenthetical notes and I also want you to notice a theme that's present in the surgery section in general Take a look at code 32096. Notice the code says thoracotomy with diagnostic biopsy. Then 32097 says thoracotomy with diagnostic biopsy, biopsy. So that means, again, doesn't matter how many biopsies we do, it is included in that one code. All right, next up, we are going to take a look at some pneumectomy codes. Guys, these codes start on the bottom of page 199, 32440. And these codes are divided based upon the extent of the pneumectomy. So was it just a wedge resection? Was it a retire, an entire lobe that was removed? Was it... Um, part of a lobe of a lung that was removed guys again documentation is going to be key next up thoracentesis take a look at code 32554 our thoracentesis procedure as you guys know is a procedure that is removing fluid from the pleural space very common um, and used for conditions such as congestive heart failure or pneumonia in some cases, guys, a drainage tube may actually be left in place. It is included in the service and it is not separately reportable. I do want you to note that these codes are divided based upon whether or not imaging guidance was utilized. There are, of course, guys, over on the same page, other procedures, parenthetical notes are your friends. All right, next up, video assisted thoracic surgery, also known as VATS. These codes start on page 3 or 201 with codes 32601 through 32674. Guys, these codes are divided um, with characteristics such as diagnostic versus surgical. Um, remember that the surgical includes the diagnostic when performed. And then as you start to look at these codes, guys, you'll notice that they have specific characteristics that make each and every code unique. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for listening to the first video for the 30,000 series. Again, the 30,000 series is rather long and so I'll come back with another video where I will continue into the 30,000 series and um, I'll probably finish up the rest of the 30,000 series but that will be a little longer because that is where you're going to see cardiovascular procedures. All right guys thank you so much and have a great day.